first of all, thanks for uh, for doing this. I really appreciate you taking time to uh, to visit with me today in the beautiful town of Auburn. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, Thank you, by the way. Well, I'm glad to do it. Um, tell me, uh, let's start out with some basic kinds of things. Okay. Let's start out with uh, you, where you started and where you've kind of spent your career. What what were what were some of your jobs that you had and kind of the timeline of your career? Well, um, of course, I grew up on a crops and beef cattle farm in western Kentucky. Um, I worked on the farm growing up, as most farm kids do. Um, I believe that I would say that the first job I had really was um, between my well, the, the summer before I was a senior in high school and the summer afterward, um, my dad uh, suggested that I raise our tobacco crop on our farm, mm -hmm. which uh, was only about three and a half acres, which doesn't sound like a lot, but given the, uh, the amount of labor that, that's involved in growing tobacco, that was a lot of work. Yes, and his, his uh, stipulation was that... Um, the money that I received from that should go into my college fund because um, you know I, I needed money for that, and I was happy to do that. And then, um, well, when I got in school at Western Kentucky University, I had several part-time jobs also to help supplement my education. Um, I worked for a while as a bellhop in a motel of all yeah. things. <laughs> I worked in a tobacco warehouse for a while, mm -hmm. moving tobacco around, unloading tobacco, and so forth. And then the main job I had, part-time job, was um, I worked for a carpet cleaning company. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I learned right away that I didn't want to spend the rest of my life working for a carpet cleaning company, so that was all good. Uh, then uh, between my sophomore and junior years in college and then also uh, my junior and senior years in college, I was a student trainee with the Soil Conservation Service. And uh, one summer they sent me to a small county over in eastern Kentucky in the mountains. Uh, the second summer they sent me to a large county which is near Louisville, Kentucky. And both of those were really good experiences for me. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the military. That was my next job after I got uh, graduated from uh, college. And then um, I decided to go to graduate school at Auburn University and had a research uh, assistantship. Uh, as it happened, when I finished my PhD, um, the position of extension forage crop agronomist came available. Uh, I applied for it and got it and worked in that position for 35 years. And since I have been retired, that was seven years ago, I've worked uh, part-time for the Oregon Forage Seed Commissions. Mm -hmm. So great long career, a very successful career, and we'll kind of get into some of those details uh, as we go along. But one of the things I, I, I'm curious uh, quite a bit about is I, I'm very familiar with where you grew up. I grew up not very far away from where you grew up. Um, very rural kind of place. It, it's uh, and you know a bit of a hard scrabble kind of kind of life. Uh, and tell me a little bit about your your home life and, and how your parents kind of supported your education and, and prompted you to continue on for education. You're absolutely right. I grew up in a, in a very rural area. Now, Owensboro is the county seat of the county I grew up in, which is, I think, fourth largest city in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that was uh, about 20 miles away from where I grew up. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, it was a very rural situation. By the way, the the name of the, uh, the the road that runs by the house I grew up in is Possum Trot Road, which <laughs> that in itself gives you an idea of how rural it actually was. Uh, but I had, a, I had a wonderful, loving family. Um, we had, uh, I mean, almost everyone who lived in my community uh, were farmers. They had uh, crops and livestock. And, and they were wonderful people. They were hardworking, uh, patriotic uh, moral, ethical people, and um, I will always be thankful for having had the opportunity to grow up in that community with those people because I think they had they affected my uh, 
attitudes and my values in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can definitely see that and certainly experience the same thing growing up in a very similar area. Um, you, you mentioned your military service. I, I'd like for you, first of all, thank you for your service. Um, so many uh, 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 folks who have uh, shown their patriotism by, by uh, serving our country. Uh, tell me a little bit about your service in the military. I understand you were in the Army, right? I was in the U.S. Army, and uh, I spent three years in the Army. Um, that was actually when the Vietnam War was pretty much at its peak, 1968 to 1971. However, I was not sent to Vietnam. I mean, I would have gone if the Army had sent me there, but uh, I was stationed in Germany, in central Germany, and I was at a major headquarters. It was the headquarters for supply for the Army in all of Europe. And, uh, uh, and we did a lot of things pertaining to how uh, supplies were moved around. Uh, for a good while, I was on a, what they call the liaison team that went to various points around Germany and also went a time or two to uh, Holland and Belgium. Mm -hmm. And we would visit Army units and make sure they were doing their supply procedures uh, in accordance with Army uh, protocol. And uh, then my wife was with me about two years of that time. Mm -hmm. And so we got to uh, travel to most countries in Western Europe. And I can tell you that that was, that was a it was a great experience for me because, first of all, having grown up on a farm in, in rural Kentucky, uh, I had never been outside the country except one time to Canada. And uh, so I got to visit all these, uh, I got to live outside the United States for one thing, but visit a lot of other foreign countries. And in addition to that, um, you know, I got to know people from all over the United States who were in the military. And, and that was such a... Uh, broadening experience for me. I believe that um, when I was discharged from the Army, uh, I, was, I was significantly different from the person I was uh, when I entered the Army. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Now, there was another gentleman that was over in Germany about that same time that uh, uh, you became very close uh, colleagues with. And, and uh, Did you know Dr. Lacefield at that time? I did not know him. It's, it's an interesting thing. Uh, we, grew, we, were, we were born in the same hospital in Owensboro, Kentucky, a, about two weeks apart. Uh, he grew up in Ohio County, Kentucky. I grew up in Davis County, Kentucky. Um, we, you know, uh, both grew up on farms. Uh, we both went to Western Kentucky University. We both married uh, home economics majors from Western Kentucky University. We both were in the Army in Germany, uh, not too many miles apart. But I did not meet him until, um, well, we were about, I think, 33 years old when we met. I met him uh, at Mississippi State University at a Southern Pastor and Forest Crop Improvement Conference mm -hmm. meeting. And the reason we hadn't met each other was uh, he went into the Army right after high school. Mm -hmm. I went into the Army after I had finished, uh, got my degree at Western Kentucky University. We did overlap one year, but by that time, you know, he was taking freshman courses. I was taking uh, senior level courses, mm -hmm. and uh, I was spending all my time other than class pretty much with my wife, Vonda, at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and so we just didn't meet each other until uh, all, all, uh, all those years later. But uh, we have made up for lost time. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed so. A great friendship, I know. Um, so let's talk about your professional career then. How did you come to be a professor at a major college here in the southeast? I know you mentioned it was right as you were finishing the PhD that this position came up. Well, it was. You know, uh, I have to tell a little story. Uh, you know, I, I rode around to a lot of different universities. Uh, I wanted to get a degree in agronomy. And I had several offers. Uh, assistantship was very important to me. And I, I got two that were pretty similar and it was on the fence whether to go one or the other. And uh, it so happened that in my community there was a boy about three or four years older than me that I really thought a lot of that for whatever reason, I'm not sure, had, had come to Auburn University. And so that sort of pushed me over the edge. I thought, well, if, if it's good enough for him, you know, I want to go to Auburn University too. And, and I was really pretty much awed by Auburn University when I first time I drove through town I saw the campus and all that. 
Anyway, uh, I came down to get a master's degree, and I thought, well, I'll be here two years, and then I'll go somewhere else to get a job or something. Well, it turned out, I uh, decided to work on a PhD, and I had the opportunity to stay at Auburn. Of course, it was a lot less expensive to stay here than to go somewhere else, although I could have gone to some other university. Um, and then, miracle of all miracles, um, just as I finished my degree, um, the Extension Forage Specialist position came open, and of course, Carl was in the uh, area of forage crop work. And I have to tell you that when, when I, the first time I came down here, I interviewed with the department head, and how show you how ignorant I was. He said, well, what area of agronomy would you like to work in? And I really hadn't thought about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I just want to work in agronomy, that's all. And, uh, and also, at that time, I had no idea how important one's major professor is. Mm -hmm. Well, that department head said, follow me. And he took me around to Carl Hovland's office and mm -hmm. asked Carl if he would be willing to take me on as a graduate student. And it was actually several years later before I fully realized how, what an important moment in my life that yeah. was yeah. when that department head said, follow me, and took me around to Carl's office. Yeah, uh, and a remarkable uh, guy, just, uh, just a really uh, great uh, person as well as an Absolutely. amazing researcher and, and uh, forage professor. That's right. So you got your master's and your PhD here and uh, spent, spent a great long career here. I'm, I'm curious, what, what was your favorite class in, in your Western Kentucky University days here? What was your favorite class that you ever took? Well, I'd have to say that my very favorite class of all that I ever took was a uh, forage ecology class that Carl Hovland mm -hmm. taught. Um, I was interested in forages anyway, but Carl, he was such an excellent teacher, and plus, um, you know, it was, uh, he, he worked hard at making his course interesting and he included not only information about uh, forage crops that are grown in Alabama or even the southeast, you know, he, he made an international course, really. I mean, you learned about crops in other countries as well, mm -hmm. and um, it, was, uh, it was an excellent course that I really enjoyed a lot. Yeah, I can imagine. I would uh, envy you that he had an opportunity to have yeah. taken the class under him. So we talked about your classes. What were some of the extracurricular activities that you got involved in? What did you do for fun outside of uh, going to school? Well, you know, um, when, you, when you're a graduate student, you don't have a, a, an awful lot of time to be doing a lot of other things. Although, you know, uh, my wife and I enjoyed concerts and plays, and um, you know, I used to play golf quite frequently with some of my graduate student friends. Uh, uh, and. You know, we had great times doing that. Uh, at that time, I was I was still uh, I still liked to hunt small game uh, with some of my graduate student friends. But I have to say that really, all things considered, uh, the extracurricular activity that I enjoyed the most and that, that has proven to uh, last in my mind uh, the longest is the times I spent with other graduate students and their wives. Um, I only went to graduate school at Auburn University, so I guess I really can't fairly compare with other universities, but it seems to me that the graduate students that we had in agronomy and soils at that time were a particularly close-knit group. Mm -hmm. It was like almost like a fraternity. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a fraternity, though, because there were gals involved, too. But we, we were really close friends, and we used to get together a lot. Uh, sometimes my wife and I with one couple or two couples, and sometimes we'd have uh, parties, get-togethers, where all the graduate students were invited. Uh, the bottom line is we had some great times. Um, we made wonderful, lasting friendships, mm -hmm. and I am still in touch with a lot of those people and I consider a lot of them to this day to be among my best friends, some of whom live in other countries. 
it's remarkable to me that uh, you know, looking back on graduate school days, how much we keep in touch with one another. And it is. When we do see each other again, we just fall right back in the same conversation. It, it is. It is. I could name you a number of people that I could go and see them and and their wives, and there would be no difference uh, really in how we would receive each other and mm -hmm. relate to each other mm -hmm. uh, than when we were in graduate school together. Mm -hmm. So you finished your degree and immediately thrust into a pretty, uh, pretty important job, uh, pretty awesome responsibility to, uh, to on behalf of the farmers of Alabama. Um, I'm curious, were, were you kind of overwhelmed at, at the start? Of, uh, did you feel confident that you knew what you were doing, that you were ready to go? Well, you know, that's a great question. Um, I certainly didn't feel overwhelmed. Uh, I was confident, no doubt about that. I was, I was definitely confident. But there's another word that I would use that I think uh, eclipses confident, and that is, I was enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't even imagine how enthusiastic I was about my job. Uh, you know, I couldn't wait till Monday morning <laughs> to, 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 to do some more work, and. Uh, I, I, I've remained enthusiastic about forage crops, and I still am, as evidenced by the fact that even though you know, I'm now a professor emeritus with Auburn University, um, I'm still spending probably 75% as much time working on forage uh, crop related uh, projects as I was uh, when I started out. So uh, yeah, it was, a, it, was a, it was a good thing. And by the way, I want to say one thing. Um, even though I was confident and it, it didn't take me long before I, I realized I could do the job. I got, I got feedback from producers and from county agents and from administrators that I could tell that you know, I was doing okay. But, but there's one thing that, that I have to admit, and this is the absolute truth, I'm not making this up. For about, I would say for about five years, I had this nagging sort of guilt feeling about not being able to get everything done that I saw that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I knew that I was working hard. I couldn't have worked much harder than I was. Um, I, I realized that I was doing good work, that I was helping people, which made me feel good. But I still couldn't totally turn loose of that little feeling for a long time. But I finally got over that. <laughs> I finally realized Hey, you know, nobody could do everything that needs to be done, yes, and, and I finally, I finally got over it. Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because that was a, one of the great pieces of advice, is, uh, advice that you've given me over the years <laughs> is to, you can't do everything. No, you and, can't. Uh, That's so right. I appreciate you saying that. Now, prioritization is really, really important. Yes, yes, definitely so. So, you, you had a great long career, and you still have a great impact in the forage industry, but what do you consider to be the greatest impact that you had? What's the biggest contribution that you, you had to uh, the forage industry? Well, I appreciate you asking that question, because that's a really easy question for me, because I think, I, think uh, I can say, and I think anyone who is very familiar with my career would say that the, the best thing I did in my career was uh, to be one of the co-authors of the book Southern Forages, because that book uh, undoubtedly has had a very important impact and has helped a lot of people. And I'm just thankful that I was in the right position to uh, be involved in that and that I had such uh, great co-authors and also that we had such a great uh, organization to work with to publish that book. It, it was like, really, it was like, that whole project was like magic to mm -hmm. me. And uh, as you know, uh, that publication, it was first published in 1991. We're now on the fifth edition, published in uh, 19, oh, 2015, I believe. Mm -hmm. And um, um, and it's still, sales are, are right about where they were to begin with. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just continuing to be uh, useful and helpful to people. So that, that's a wonderful uh, fulfillment to me. Well, I can certainly guarantee you there's a lot of us that can uh, point to that book and the influence it's had on our careers, as well as a lot of producers, a lot of students who uh, uh, have been impacted by it as well. So I, I, 
I know you've done many, many other things in your career that have had a lot of impact, but that certainly, I would think, is, is one of the biggest ones. I, I think that's an easy choice there. <laughs> so, so on that subject, are there some other things that you've done that you're really proud of, the things that you've been able to uh, kind of make your mark with? Well, thank you for asking. There are some, and in particular, um, I, along with uh, university colleagues at several different universities uh, uh, across the nation, have worked on what I might refer to as uh, national level extension publications. In other words, they're extension type publications oriented toward uh, county agents and farmers, uh, but they're not uh, they're not specifically focused on on one state as many such publications are. And I'll give you a few examples of those. Uh, we had one called uh, Minimizing Losses in Hay Storage and Feeding. Mm -hmm. uh, we had one called uh, the, the Tall Fescue Endophyte Story. Uh, there was one called uh, Understanding Forage Quality. And one called uh, uh, see, uh, Extending Grazing and Reducing Stored Feed Requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the main ones, but there were there were hundreds of thousands of copies of those publications distributed. Mm -hmm. uh, various uh, ways of funding those and various publishers, but those publications, I believe, uh, made an impact because you know they went to a lot of different people, and then there's a there's a trickle down effect. You know, when mm -hmm. when people learn about, for example, the tall fescue endophyte, uh, you know. They tell it to other people, uh, county agents, uh, using their radio broadcasts and newsletters, and so I believe I believe those publications made a big impact, and I'm I'm, I'm pl proud that I was involved in that. And then one other thing I'll mention, um, I I was responsible for putting together the information that was needed to register the uh, variety Russell Bermuda grass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that variety. Uh, it's, I think it's had a positive impact, and there's an estimated 50,000 acres of that grass uh, in the Deep South. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of our uh, best varieties in the Southeast, and one that we uh, highly recommend. Yeah. It's a great solid variety, and uh, um, you know, it, it really has, a, has made its mark, certainly, across the Southeast uh, as a variety. I'm glad you mentioned those other publications, too, because those are, uh, I consider them to be very, very impactful as well. I, I use just about every one of those at, at, at many of the meetings that we do. So uh, it really has uh, been more than just the Southern Forges. And uh, not to minimize that in any way, but there's been a lot to that. So you, you've had a lot of success in your career, but what, what was, what's your favorite part of the job? What do you like to do the most? <laughs> well, I really like most all aspects of my job, to be honest with you. But I think the thing that, um, has really been rewarding to me is working with forage livestock producers, especially when I get feedback from them in which they let me know that I helped them. Mm -hmm. that, uh, that feedback, that positive feedback, it's, uh, it's almost addictive, I think. Mm -hmm. I just, I love that feeling and uh, I've, I've been in a position where uh, I've, I've gotten that a lot in, in a lot of situations. And you know, I, I see a lot of people who do a lot of good work that don't get that kind of feedback. I think a lot of teachers, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, teachers help a lot of students, particularly elementary and high school level, and, and they help a lot of people, but they don't get the feedback, and they get some feedback. But much of it, if they get it at all, comes years later than when they were actually doing the work. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I work and get immediate feedback in a lot of cases, and that's uh, been a wonderful thing for me. It certainly does charge the batteries. That's it does. Nice it does. Of the job too, so. That keeps that enthusiasm going that <laughs> I was talking about earlier. <laughs> so, so, you know, as we said, you have had a lot of successes, but are there things that you regret or the things that you wish you had handled differently or that uh, you'd done more on or something like that? Would, what, are there any regrets that you have in your career? Well, you know, anytime you work at something for a long period of time, you can look back and think, well, I wish I'd done that a little differently. 
Uh, yeah, I've had a few little regrets, but really not enough to uh, uh, think about very much. I mean, I could mention a few little things, but uh, as far as the uh, decisions I made and the work that I did, uh, I believe I was on track most of the time. Uh, there were times when there were things going on that I was not fully informed about, and uh, as I look back, yeah, it would have been better if I'd done such and such another way. But, but uh, I don't have any real regrets, and uh, I've I've had a, I think I've had a good career, and I feel good about it. Yeah, well, I think you've had a great career, and you should feel great about it. Uh, there's no, I don't think I could name anyone who's ever said a. a unkind word about you. You uh, have ultimate respect. <laughs> you haven't been talking uh, to talk the right people. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but I'll tell you. Um, so, you, you obviously are a guy who likes to have fun. I do. Uh, I do. I, I'm curious, what are some of the things that you, you do as a hobby now and uh, things that, that give you, uh, have, so that you have a good time with? What do you do to have fun? Well, you know, uh, I, I have to say, first of all, that uh, really, I am a guy who I put a, I put a high priority on fun. <laughs> I really do, and uh, and I, I wouldn't want a job that I didn't think was fun. And that's one of the things that has kept me working uh, in the job that I've been in. Uh, it, I, I see it as fun. I see life as fun. I see I see my work as fun. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of just the enjoyment of my work, which is that, by the way, it's a, it's a wonderful blessing to be able to enjoy your job. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And I feel sorry for people who hate their jobs, and a lot of people are in that situation, unfortunately. But uh, you know, as far as uh, you know, I guess that uh, at this point in my life. Um, I get I, I get a lot of fun out of uh, well I enjoy music by the way I listen to music a lot practically every night uh, don't watch much television really uh, we uh, my wife and I like to travel uh, I like to read mm -hmm. and uh, that's probably oh and I like to grow flowers especially roses I had a rose garden for mm. thirty years probably yeah. I like to grow uh, particularly hybrid tea roses so nice very good well you mentioned your wife uh, and I know. Your wife has been uh, a really important part of your success and, and uh, just a sweet heart of a, of a woman as well. So tell me a little bit about how your wife has been part of your your career and, and your life. Well, I, I can't say enough good things about my wife, to be honest with you. She, she has been wonderful in so many ways. Uh, she has always been uh, my supporter, my partner. Um, if I needed help, uh, she would help me with, um, including with professional projects. Um, you know, she, I traveled a lot. So she took care of the kids when I was gone. Um, uh, you know, she, uh, she, I, I could not have asked for a better supporter than her. And uh, any, any recognition I get, really, she deserves a significant portion of that because I couldn't have done it without her. Mm. Yeah. Well, I can definitely see that, and uh, and uh, your all's love for one another too is just uh, apparent as well. Whenever seeing you at meetings and whatnot and interacting with her, so I'm curious. This job does demand a lot of time. It does demand a lot of time on the road. Right. How did you balance your your home life and, and your relationship with your wife and your kids? with being on the road and, and the job, the demands of the job? Well, that's a, uh, a really good question. And, you know, I think anyone who is conscientious about their job, who has a job that to do it right does require a lot of time, struggles with that issue. And I have to admit I've struggled with it myself. But um, my wife has been really very understanding, by the way. A lot of women, I think, or a lot of spouses would not uh, tolerate very well their spouse being gone as much. But I'll say this, you know, other than when I absolutely needed to be uh, away doing something, I mean, I was not, I was always at home. In other words, I was either working or at home. Um, I tried to spend as much time with my children and my wife as I could. Uh, whenever I could, I took them with me on trips. Mm -hmm. And especially now that uh, our kids are grown, uh, my wife is retired, uh, almost every time I go outside of Auburn, she goes with me, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 
we've we've had the opportunity to go to a lot of places and um, you know have uh, we're, we're kind of experts at combining work and pleasure these days <laughs> and uh, so you know I, I'm not going to say that I've been perfect and when you've got a job like I've had or like you have uh, you know there are times when you you just kind of struggle with that issue and you think well maybe maybe I'm not doing this as well as I could but I think all you can do is do the best you can and yeah. and uh, go from there yeah I, I completely agree so I guess I'm curious about looking back on on your career do you feel like this is where you were you were meant to be do you feel like you you've accomplished the things that you set out to do in your career well <clears throat> your first question is uh, uh, do I think this is where I was meant to be? It, it does seem that this is where I was meant to be because I can, I really can hardly imagine any job that I would have liked any more than the one I've had. I mean, I've had the opportunity to get some jobs that would pay a higher salary or something like that, but as we talked about earlier, fun is, a, is a really important to me, and I have fun with my job, so I mean, I can hardly imagine that I would, would have liked any other job better. But now, it wasn't like uh, as a small child I decided I wanted to be an extension forage crop agronomist. Um, I think it would be a great advantage to any young person if they, if they did know in their heart exactly what they wanted to do when they grew up. I didn't. Mm -hmm. However, I would say this. Uh, my, my parents, uh, they would often use the statement, uh, you, you know, you need to, uh, to make a difference or you need to amount to something in this world. Mm. Well, I was committed from a young age that I intended to amount to something. I wanted to do something worthwhile that would help society. It was just a question of what area I would get focused on. But, but I, I, I had in mind that once I did get into my profession, whatever that would be, I would try my best to be good at it. And by the way, I, I gave that advice to my children a thousand times. I don't really care what you do, but do something that you're going to enjoy and try to be the best at it. Yeah. And I think that's pretty good advice. I think that's excellent advice and it reminds me of, uh, uh, I heard a saying once that, you know, one shouldn't look for a, a meaning to their life, but to rather live a meaningful life and at the end, you know, as, as one has conducted theirself in their career or their passions, they look back and they, they see that their life had meaning. Uh, is that something that kind of resonates with you? Oh, it absolutely does. Um, I, I, I believe that I have made good contributions to society and that I've helped other people and that has made me feel good and, um, and I, I'm thankful that I've had the opportunity to, to do the work I've done. Yeah, well, many of us who have been impacted positively uh, by, your, uh, by your work uh, are equally thankful that you have done that. And so just to kind of wrap this up, um, I'm always curious if you could distill all of your, your career and, and who Don Ball is to, to one word, what would that one word be? <laughs> Well, um, I, would, I would imagine, you probably should ask some other people that. I'm sure you get some really interesting <laughs> words. But uh, I suppose that given what I've done in my career, or what I've tried to do at least, uh, my objectives, uh, I, th I think the, the word that I would like people to think of when they think of me would be educator. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I've tried to do. I've tried to educate people about forage livestock production. Uh, provide them with information that would help them uh, in their businesses and in their lives. Well, I think you can rest assured that that was very successful uh, Thank you. Uh, being that. So, Don, I really appreciate you taking time to do this. This has been thank a you. great pleasure. And uh, I really have enjoyed the conversation. So thank you very you much. You too. Thank you, my friend.